Seven years ago, I was in the same shoes that many of you probably are in. I didn't have a lot of money, I hadn't flipped a house, and I didn't know where I was gonna go in my life. Fast forward to today, I've bought hundreds of homes, and I even bought a 334 unit apartment recently. And I would have never imagined that things would have grown as fast as they did considering where I was just seven years ago. But I wanna share with you what my journey was like when I was in your shoes, because one deal changed my life, and I know it can do the same for you. And if you stay to the end, I'll tell you what my plans are next for me and where I see real estate investing going in the future. My journey in real estate started in 2010 when I became a licensed realtor. It was a totally different time in real estate than what you see today. Right now, the market is hot and prices are going up everywhere. And it's super easy to get money, to get buyers, and to just sell real estate. But in 2010, it was a completely different story. At that time, the majority of people had just gotten foreclosed on or had a bankruptcy or a short sale. And many of them lost their homes and weren't able to qualify for another. And as a realtor, my job was to help people buy and sell homes. While on one hand, nobody owned homes because they lost them all during the Great Recession. Almost everything you saw in the market was a bank owned property. But on the other hand, it was very difficult to find buyers. People didn't have money and they didn't qualify for loans because of their recent foreclosure or bankruptcy. And to make matters even worse, the prices were so low that even if I did find a buyer or a seller, I wasn't making very much money on the deal. The same house that you see today in Las Vegas for $400,000, could be had for less than 100,000. And so it's no coincidence as a 21 year old realtor trying to figure things out at the hardest time ever to be a realtor, I did not succeed. That first year I probably made around $10,000 in commissions. But the worst part about it was I realized I did not like being a realtor. I didn't enjoy the process of driving buyers around or going on listing appointments. And I became really frustrated when buyers didn't wanna buy homes that I thought were extremely undervalued. I remember one time I was showing a home that was built in 2008 and the owner had already been foreclosed on in 2010. They bought it for $350,000 just two years prior as a new home. And now that home was listed for $80,000. For me, I'm thinking this is a smoking deal. The house is essentially brand new. Where can you get a house like that for $80,000? Well, my buyer didn't agree with me. They felt like the market still might go down. And I asked him, what do you think it's gonna go down to? Do you think these houses will be free one day? I don't understand how you could lose buying a house for $80,000 that will rent for 1200 bucks and it's almost brand new. Well, they ended up thinking that I was an idiot and they didn't buy the house. And in that moment, I realized that I did not wanna be a realtor long-term, but if I was somehow able to get money, being an investor could be very good for me. Unfortunately, I didn't have any money, nor did I know anyone with any money. And things like YouTube and podcasts weren't as big as they are today. The information wasn't so freely available like it is now. I had no one to look up to online, I didn't have any local mentors that were willing to train me, and I didn't see anybody that was doing it to give me proof of concept. And so in my mind, I kind of gave up the dream. And as the years passed in 2011, 2012, 2013, I always had this idea that if I just had money, I could flip houses. But it wasn't until the end of 2014 that I finally believed that I could do it. At that point, I was in New Orleans with my wife celebrating our one year anniversary. And I saw one of those TV commercials advertising how you could buy houses with no money. And being a skeptical person by nature, I completely dismissed it. But I felt like God was calling me to look more into it, and so I decided to research it online. That led me down the rabbit hole of finding a place called Bigger Pockets, which then led me down to another rabbit hole of buying a couple of books by my now friend Brandon Turner, and also listening to their podcast. And it was from Brandon's book that I learned about hard money loans, which completely changed my life. That was when I realized that there were people that had money looking for people like me who were good at finding deals. And if I found a good deal, they would be willing to fund it regardless of what my credit or tax returns look like. When I got back from my trip, I called up every hard money lender I could in Las Vegas and found one that would fund me. And I decided to go out and look for my very first flip. Now during this time, I'd saved up $10,000 from couch flipping. At the time, couch flipping was not a thing. It was just something that I was doing to make some money to survive. But ever since I put out a YouTube video on it and made some TikToks, it's become this viral phenomenon across the nation. And now it's kind of cool. But at the time, it wasn't. 
But I am fortunate that while doing it, I was able to save up that $10,000 and still have an income going as I was trying to figure out real estate. After about three months of searching, I ended up finding my first deal on Craigslist. It was a super generic ad that a wholesaler posted. He said he wanted 135,000 for it and that the ARV was 190,000. It was actually pretty close to where I grew up and I figured that it sounded like a good deal. So I called him up and we went and toured the property together. After walking the deal with him, I realized that it was pretty good and it was now or never to make a choice. Was I gonna take action and do the deal or was I gonna pass because I'm fearful of something I've never done? Well, I decided that it was now or never and I signed the contract. The only problem was the $10,000 was not enough to cover my down payment on the hard money loan. They wanted to see 20% down. And so I had to come up with essentially $30,000. While I was searching for a deal, I knew that this might be a problem. So I started applying for 0% interest credit cards. There were many of them that had promotions for 12 to 18 months. So I applied for all of them and I ended up getting about $50,000 in credit between both myself and my wife. And I decided to do a balance transfer for the full $50,000 so that we had enough just in case things didn't work out the way we thought. And so I used those credit cards to fund that very first deal. Now, even though that was a huge step in the right direction, I still was looking for other deals. And I just so happened to come across one just a few weeks later. This one was on the MLS for $99,000. It looked like it was in great shape, but it just happened to be underpriced. And after some back and forth with the agent, I ended up getting it for 96,000. Now I didn't wanna put 20% down again because that would leave me with almost no reserves. And so I reached out to another hard money lender who was a little more expensive. I said, hey, I've got this good deal, but I don't wanna put 20% down. What's the best you can do? I also mentioned that I'd been in real estate for five years, which is true because I was a realtor since 2010, even though I still kinda didn't know what I was doing. I think that might've helped him because he agreed to do it for $7,000 down. The points and fees were extremely high. I remember it was four points and 12%, but I was willing to pay it to get into that deal with a low down payment. And I ended up selling that second house before the first because it was in such good shape. We just cleaned it up and put about $2,000 into it. And I sold it less than 60 days later for 135,000. And that house ended up making me about $25,000 net profit and my life was completely changed. A few months later, I sold the first one I bought and made 15,000 on that deal as well. And I proceeded to buy three more homes later that year. I kept my credit cards max and reinvested my profits into the next deals. And all of that led me to buying five houses that first year, 20 the second year, 50 the next year, and then over 100 every year since. Now here's the moral of that story. I was most certainly fearful of losing money and not knowing what I was doing. I'd never gotten a hard money, high interest loan, let alone two of them at once. The previous five years, I had felt like a failure in real estate as a realtor. And there were constantly people in the media telling me that it's probably not a great time to buy real estate. And that includes my family. Yet I still decided that the risk was worth the reward. In the very worst case, if everything went south and I failed, at least I was young enough to recover. I would have never imagined that the best case would be what it is today, seven years later. But one thing I've learned over the years watching other successful people is that nobody achieves big things without taking risk. So if you're in the same boat that I was in, I'd ask yourself one question. Most people think about the risk of losing, but what's the risk if you don't take any action? If you spend years continuing to do the same thing, trying to play it safe and living with regret and what ifs, I think the risk of that is far greater than any downside risk of losing money. As people have proven from the Great Recession, you can recover from a huge loss, but nobody recovers from inaction and never doing anything. And for me, I still continue to take that attitude as I go forward beyond real estate investing. I've started brand new companies along the way that have nothing to do with real estate. And I believe that I'll start others that are gonna make me far more than house flipping ever did. And I'll have the same fears and insecurities starting those new companies because now I have more to lose and more responsibility. But I'm not gonna let that stop me because I know the potential reward is far greater than anything else. So my point is the most successful people in the world are always trying to get better. And in order to get better by definition, you've gotta achieve something that you've never done before, which is always gonna be unknown. So when are you gonna get out of your comfort zone and try something new?